Well, hello. My name is Karen um, from Elegant Upgrades. And if you're following along on my journey, I am flipping furniture to be able to buy a house. So that's the goal. Um, this piece here is actually a commission piece. So um, it won't be one of my typical listings that I do, but it's a really cool piece. And if you'd like to see how we I uh, did it, then uh, let's get to it. Okay, so here's the before shot. Um, this did need quite a bit of work. Um, I'm just going to start by taking off the hardware, as you do, and then give it a once over and fix any repairs that it needs. And of course, take those stickers off. <laughs> stickers are the worst. So this whole side here had a missing piece of veneer and also it was very loose so I just went ahead and took it off, scraped off the glue and I'm re-gluing it and then I will use some filler to fill in the missing, the missing piece there. And I'm just using tape stretched very tightly to hold it back on and then it was missing that lower piece of trim. So I'm using the Amazing Mold Putty. It's just a two-part putty system that you mix it together. And I'm going to take a cast of the upper piece of molding. And then that just sits on there for a few minutes. So I'm using this little block there to make the bottom flat because I like to make sure that when you take it off and fill it with whatever you're going to fill it with, it sits flat. So while I'm waiting for that, this thing had a ton of dings and scratches just everywhere. So I'm taking some putty and just going over and filling in everything so that the final paint job will be really, really smooth. So I'm just popping the seal on our amazing mold putty now, and we've got a great cast of it. So I think that resin would be as far as a finished product would be better for this however resin takes forever to dry and I have to do several molds of this so I'm using air dry clay instead and I like air dry clay because you can pop it out and kind of let it sit for a while right after you put it in so you can make a lot of molds very quickly and air dry clay is great for pieces that you want to have like texture and everything in so this will work for this one but I think I would have preferred a smoother a smoother finish on it it ended up being perfect and it's not it wasn't a big deal but it's just something for the future if you want a smoother piece you want to use resin instead of air dry clay but if you want texture and things like that then air dry clay is a great product for that so there I was just showing you there's gonna be bleeding on this piece any type of coloring coming through your putty is just a clear indicator that that's what you're gonna have to deal with so I went through removed the stickers gave it a scuff sand and then wiped it all down and since i knew this piece was going to bleed there's some primer um, you have to prime pieces that are bleeders unless you're using a really dark color and you don't think it will show through this piece showed through and i can't tell you how many coats of primer that i did because i honestly lost count it was insane it was just non-stop bleeding this red pink just nonsense so a billion coats of primer later and it was fine <laughs> so the top two drawers since they had that inset I thought it would be perfect to do some decoupaging and you guys know how much I love decoupage so this is a redesign with Prima decoupage paper which is actually more like a dryer sheet I've never used this specifically before now I did like it as far as laying it down because if you need to reposition it or anything like that it's very sturdy and the poly does go through it from top to bottom really easily. However, I will say in the end, it does have a texture. So what I did here is I let a little bit of the poly dry outside the lines of the drawer to stiffen it up so that when I use my razor blade, it cut really, really smoothly. So that's a fun trick if you, if you needed that there. And then you just go back over the top with poly again. I always use poly for my decoupaging. So here I've got my colors. We're going to be doing kind of a modeled blend on this piece. It's just gonna be lots of layers and lots of kind of colors going everywhere. And this is my first 
layout of this and so I didn't really know what I was doing. I know I was using complementary colors to the decoupage paper. So I was just kind of going based off that. And I'm just putting this part in here because it's my first coat and I'm just kind of making stuff up. And I actually did not love how this turned out. So I immediately changed it on the other side. And that's kind of the fun of this. Like you have your base coat down. It's giving your piece the coverage that it needs, but you're like, oh, I hate this. It's fine on your second coat. It's, it'll be perfect. But yeah, this was just a little too pinky for me. Too much, too much pink. And the floral paper was just very kind of dark and romantic and I just felt like the pink was too bubblegum. So can't have that. So I am doing a rose gold hardware. I took off the original hardware with the exception of the top. I'm keeping the original on top, but the bottom hardware I just wasn't a huge fan of for this. So I changed that out. So here's where I started liking what was happening with the blend. I chose to add the colors directly next to the paper. So like where there were green leaves, I put green. Where there was the purple flower, I put purple. Where there was the pink, pink, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. So I put that on there and then I was kind of like, okay, this is, this is more fun. This is more dark and dreamy and kind of what I was looking for. Less pinky. Still with hints of it, but not overwhelming. I just, I didn't want this to feel like a Barbie piece. So now I have the drawers out so that I can really focus without getting any paint on the drawers, but I want them in to decide on where I was gonna be putting the colors. And then as far as blending goes, I just kind of go back and forth with my brushes. You can use a clean blending brush between each colors if you don't like muddying up your brushes. I typically don't care about muddying up my brushes. I just do in the moment whatever I think is best, just going back and forth until I think it looks good, as you can see there. Like I just threw them on in blobs and then work them out. If uh, one color gets hidden away, I can add a little bit more back if I need to and I just kind of go back and forth until it's something that I feel looks good. So the outskirts there, I could kind of play around with it and do something a little bit different because it doesn't have to match perfectly to the paper there because it's not touching. And I just knew that I wanted that very outside edge to be darker than the inside edge. And now I know on the drawers I'm going to be adding a transfer, so I do need the inner parts to be lighter. Not light, just lighter than the edges so that the transfer shows up a little bit. I didn't want it to be too much because we've already got the floral paper paper in there and I didn't want there to be too much going but this piece has a ton going on with it who am I kidding there's a lot going on with it but I I really enjoy it so if you're extra too <laughs> here you go so this part was a process because it was such a large area and I'm trying to keep all those colors in there and keep them blended but again trying to keep the middle light-ish and the outside edges could be dark it was just kind of like a game of back and forthies that i wasn't sure if i was gonna win but <laughs> in the end i think i think it turned out great So you could see I was going back and forth there a little bit. It's kind of as I go and I'm looking at things and deciding, you know, where I want to add more green or where I want to add more purple. And it's just how I'm rolling. And so I needed to let this first coat dry. It's not where I wanted it to be, but I did, you know, need to add some gilding wax because what would one of my videos be without gilding wax? Not my video. So you can kind of see on the second coat, it's starting to come together a little bit more. It's getting a little deeper. It's getting a little more dimension. Just everything is always better on the second coat. I decided I wanted a lot more green added. Whereas before, like I said, it was just 
a little too girly, a little too like pinky light. I didn't want that. So on the second coat, I was like, oh, I just, I need to add more green because it's going to add more depth and dimension and just make me happier. And then you can see I'm just sw literally swirling the colors together, just kind of making it a cloudy, blurry mess of color. And it, it will turn out okay in the end. It does look crazy now, but it, it'll be okay. Just trust the process if you want to try something like this. Don't be afraid to keep going back either. Like you kind of have to work in sections as you're going. So because your paint's gonna dry and everything, but especially with a blend like this, it's it's so cloudy that, I mean, it's a very nice blend to do if you're beginning because it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm trying to keep in as much of this as possible Actually, I th I'm pretty sure I kept in all of the footage of this and I just sped it up a ton because I've, I've had a couple people say that they, you know, need to see the full, the full process. But it's, I mean, it's literally just the same thing over and over going back and forth. Okay, so here is a whitewash. It's just my cream color that I use mixed with water. I slap it on there, wipe it back, and then I did two rounds of this and I do my dabbing technique with the cloth as well. So you'll see a lot of texture in the next shot that comes up. There'll be a lot of texture added to it, not the swiping texture because I don't like that, but you'll see like the towel gets dabbed around everywhere and you can kind of see there that it's kind of like a mottled finish. So now that this is on here, I can kind of lay out my transfer and figure out where I want it to go where I need to cut anything, how I want it, you know, to kind of line up. And then I'm measuring from side to side to make sure it's centered. And I'll do this with every piece. So transfers are super easy. I do think that they're expensive. It hurts me, but I've gotten like three uses out of this one. So that's really cool. So here I'm actually creating a glaze. So I've got my Chalk Mountain Poly and then I add a touch of sapphire to it because I don't have any blue in the paint job, but there is blue in the floral paper. So that's why I'm adding it here. And this is again, another layer of texture and dimension that I'm adding while also, fun fact, sealing the piece. So because it's done with poly and just a little bit of the color, it's, it's also, you know, sealing the piece, but giving more dimension. And then I felt like, again, I'm just at, this has so much on it. I'm doing a quatrefoil stencil on the side with the rose gold to tie in more of the pink so it's not too pinky, but we still have, you know, that color in there. It's a very feminine piece. And then over my stencils, I almost always go over it with uh, sandpaper just to kind of let it look lived in so it's not super prominent on there. And then I'm taking the same poly with the sapphire with a little bit of sapphire blended in and I'm doing that over the top of the stencil as well so again it's just layer upon layer of everything to kind of create this one look and then also drawer sides because I have to I can't not do drawer sides it's against the rules and then after I was finished I really put this off till the very end because contact paper is the worst st I mean ugh. This was the easiest drawer that I did, and it's the one that I put on camera. I wish you could have seen the other ones. They broke off in the smallest pieces. My fingers, I thought, might have fallen off. I, it just, I could have had bloody stumps for fingers, and I would have just been like, yeah, that's what contact paper does to you. Ruins your life. So, yeah, this took me, oh my goodness, I don't even know how long to do all five of those drawers. It was dreadful. Yeah, you can see it just like snaps off. Oh, it just hated me so much. So you can use a heat gun, but when it's this old, this is really old contact paper. This wasn't like a fresh something that somebody just put in. So a heat gun doesn't actually work on stuff this old. It just doesn't.
you just have to suffer through. But yay, we come to the finished piece and this is it. And it turned out beautiful. So there's tons of extra details on the top and on the sides and just everywhere. So this was given to me by a friend of the family. She's the one that wanted it done. In exchange, she gave me a bunch of furniture. So that was kind of our trade for this because, you know, I needed more furniture to do, to sell for money. So thanks so much for following along. I hope you guys like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I will see you next week.